Hey everyone, David Shapiro here with a video um, on using GPT-3 to create uh, fiction. So here are just a few tips and tricks that I use to uh, to generate, you know, dialogue or whatever. So first is the brainstorm. Brainstorm some ideas for a funny scene between. Let's use characters that uh, GPT-3 is going to know between Spider-Man and Mary Jane. And then I'll just go ahead and give it a dash. So the purpose of this dash is to tell it to do a list. Whoops, and control enter. Okay, so let's see. Um, it likes, uh, if you, t so um, first thing, if you use imperative verbs like brainstorm or imagine, um, GPT-3 does really well with that. Um, so it is really helpful to open with an imperative uh, thing. Not just write, right? Because, you know, write or create or generate. Um, that's where I started. But if you can be more specific, you'll get better results. So I want it to brainstorm. That's the behavior I want. All right, so it says Spider-Man and Mary Jane are sitting in a cafe. Spider-Man is trying to read a book but keeps getting interrupted by people coming up to him and asking for pictures. Uh, Mary Jane is trying to talk to him, but he's not paying attention. That's kind of mean. Um, Spider-Man and Mary Jane are at a fancy restaurant. Mary Jane is trying to eat her food, but Spider-Man keeps stealing her food off her plate. <laughs> I can imagine him doing that with a spider silk. Um, also, he's unironically dressed as Spider-Man in public. Spider-Man and Mary Jane are in bed, but he won't stop talking. Okay, that's kind of lame. Spider-Man and Mary Jane are at a park. Is writing, read, uh, Mary Jane is trying to read a book, but Spider-Man keeps climbing on her and hanging off of her. <laughs> Spider-Man, I'm not a lamppost. Okay, so you also see this, where there's no space. Um, this is another aberration. Um, so let me take a screenshot of that so I can send it off to the GPT-3 folks because um, they want to see this kind of stuff. This is one of those weird things. Okay, so let's grab one of these. Um, I think that this last one is the most absurd, so let's grab that one, and I'll say, uh, let's see, um, imagine a scene, uh, let's see, imagine the following scene, write the screenplay uh, dialogue for this scene, scene, okay, um, be creative. So then we'll just prompt it to start with Spider-Man. And we'll hit go. See what it does. Okay. So it says, hey, MJ, what are you reading? Mary Jane, just a book. What kind of book? A romance novel. Ooh, can I read it with you? <laughs> no, Spider-Man, this is my alone time. <laughs> but I'm lonely. <laughs> go swing on some web or something but I don't want to. Well, I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to find something else to do. Fine. Okay. So, it, let's see. He was clingy, but not climbing on her or hanging off of her. And that's okay. So let's restart this. Let me show you how temperature might affect this. Let's see what happens if we turn up the temperature. <laughs> okay, it makes him sound like a little kid. Come on, Mary Jane, play with me. Spider-Man, I'm trying to read, but I'm bored. Well, why don't you go swing on the swing or something? Okay, um, so we're still not quite getting what we want, right? Um, because that behavior that it brainstormed of like climbing on someone is really difficult. So here's another thing that I do. I will often use the next line as a stop. So Spider-Man and Mary Jane. So we'll use those as stops. Um, so let's see. So, hey MJ, what you're reading? And so then we'll just manually type it in, Mary Jane, see what she says. Just a book, Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm wondering why why it doesn't call her call him Peter Parker. Okay, we'll say we'll change this to Peter. Let's see, Spider-Man uses webs to um, 
yank the book away. Um, Mary Jean, let's see what she says to this. Hey, give that back. Spider-Man. Only for a kiss. Okay, so he's being he's being trying to be sweet. That's that's what's emerging from this scene. No way, Spider-Man, I'm not kissing. And so it also does this thing where um, you see how it like adds a few new lines, um, even though it's supposed to be continuing this. I'm not sure why it does that. No way, Spider-Man, I'm not kissing you. Let's see. Pouting. Oh, why not? And also, sorry, I keep bumping the microphone. Let me move it just a little bit. There we go. Okay, he climbs on her back like a spider. <laughs> Get off me, you're so annoying. Okay, so now let's rem since we've since we've given it something to go off of. Usually GPT-3 can queue off of something if you've already got it started. So let's just go ahead and see where it co where it goes with this. Looks sullen. Okay. Um, well, this ended up being very, very wholesome. I'm not sure if I agree with this. I mean, sure, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's nice that they, they reconciled very quickly. Um, let's, let's change this a little. Um, so let's add something to the prompt. Um, the scene escalates into a, uh, let's say argument because argument is a safer word than fight it's also more specific so again you got to be specific because if you say it escalates to a fight you and i might know that like okay that means a couple's argument or a couple's quarrel but because it's spider-man gpt3 might be like oh he starts beating up mary jane and of course that's not safe um did i misspell argument an argument there we go um escalates into an argument so let's just change this one thing and see how that changes the outcome. Slaps him. Yeah, so you see how like it, uh, you know, it's okay with violence. Um, so even just saying it escalates into an argument, but it drastically changed the outcome. You love it, he leans in to kiss her, she slaps him, leave me alone. Um, okay, so instead of saying it escalates into an argument, Let's say it escalates into a uh, comical misunderstanding. And let's see how that goes. <laughs> okay, this is this is so painfully cringe, um, but I'm just showing you like how modifying one little thing at a time will uh, will do this. Okay. So let's go back, let's leave the same prompt, but let's change the engine. So let's go back to um, DaVinci Instruct Beta. So DaVinci Instruct Beta was before it was more aligned. So it is, it, Instruct Beta tends to be a little bit more creative, although sometimes it goes off the rails. So let's see what happens on Instruct Beta. Am I too short? Okay, it just it runs on and on and on. Okay, so you see here, it's being like, why don't you want to kiss me? Am I too short? That's more creative. So they've they've actually like trained out a lot of the creativity of the latest Instruct series. So if you need to be more creative, I find that going back to Instruct Beta or even DaVinci, the original one, um, you'll get a lot more creativity. Um, you're just not my type. So that's like, okay, that's really different. Um, Spider-Man looks puzzled. Am I, I'm, I'm your type? Mary Jane laughs. Peter, us becoming friends? That's my type. Oh, he just got friend zoned. Okay. And so then it kind of restarts the scene. This is one problem with some of the older models is that they're still, they're still liable to go off the rails. Um, but it basically like reinvent, reinvented the scene. Um, so we can just delete that. 
Uh, okay, so I think we've I think we've taken this to its logical conclusion. Spider Man and Mary Jane are known characters, but what if you want to invent new characters? Okay, so let's say uh, let's say this is the dialogue for a video game. Um, the player is a lone ranger type in the American Wild West in 1840. Um, the player has entered a frontier town called Podunk. Um, the player has walked up to the town sheriff and is looking for quests. The sheriff knows that there are bandits hidden out in a ravine but doesn't trust the player yet. The player must earn the sheriff's trust through doing side quests and smooth dialogue. Um, one second. Okay. Um, sorry, I had to let my dog in. Um, okay, the player must earn the sheriff's trust through doing side quests and smooth dialogue. The sheriff has a lazy eye that he's really insecure about. Okay, so player, um, are you the sheriff around here? And let's add those stops because basically what we're going to do is simulate a dialogue tree that would happen in a video game. So we actually want it to generate one thing at a time and then I as the player, quote unquote, will... Um, will uh, We'll fill in dialogue. Okay, so player, and we'll also do sheriff, um, just so that it does one thing at a time. All right, sheriff. He says, yep, that's me. Sounds good enough. Player, um, got any work for a, uh, for a random cowboy? Sheriff, let's see what the sheriff says to that. Yeah, I got two quests for you, as it turns out. <laughs> well, that was easy. Um, okay. Well, that was easy. What you got? Sheriff. The bandits bother our cattle all the time, and I want them gone, so you should pay them a visit. So that's pretty cool. Um, it obviously was not quite able to handle... Um, the trust part. Um, but let's see if it can remember. Let's see, player. What's up with your eye, dude? Sheriff. <laughs> okay, let's see. What is with your eye? Let's try that again. Oh, that might be why. The temperature is too high. So let's turn the temperature down just a little bit. Um, what? Your eye. Are you looking at me or the mountains? Sheriff. I can't tell anymore. <laughs> okay, so this has gone a little too far, and GPT-3 has kind of lost the plot, so to speak. Um, okay, let's do an experiment. Let's go to an older Da Vinci to see if it can figure out what's going on here. One day I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> this sheriff is very, very willing to talk. Um, okay, so one thing is that the older Da Vinci um, is, it does okay as long as there's enough of a, of a prompt, um, like a, a few shot prompt, so that it understands the pattern. And so here it sees that there's a dialogue going on. So even original Da Vinci, without any other instructions, can usually handle this. And you'll get a lot more creativity. And you see how, like, okay, go, switching back to original Da Vinci, it just said, okay, let's, ca let's carry on the conversation. How do I get to Blackthorn Ravine? And let's see what it makes up. You'll need a horse. I got a couple that might suit you. Player. For free? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that was clever. Okay, so he, the sheriff says you'll need a horse. So he told us the mission up front. This was unexpected. So the sheriff told us about the mission up front. He says, you'll need a horse. And I asked for free. He's like, well, you got to earn my trust first. So it actually did harken back to the sheriff doesn't trust the player yet. So you, I'll tell you where the horses are, but you got to do some work for me first. Player, find what work. Let me guess. Save a little girl from a well or something. Oh, it just went straight to an end. <laughs> uh, I want you to murder a guy for me. Completion may contain unsafe content. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell GPT-3 that this is this is writing fiction and it's hypothetical. Um, yes. Okay. All right. The sheriff wants us to murder someone. Player. Wow. Really trusting of you. Of you to casually mention murder like that okay he went straight to it his name is Clem the guy's in the next room over he's a real jerk but I can't afford to lose his vote well that doesn't make any sense so why kill him okay uh, I think this one has gone on far enough you can see that if uh, if if these if this was happening you um, you could easily just you know stuff this into a video game um, let's try an experiment though let's go back up so instead of because one thing is that GPT-3 won't um, if you or open AI rather if you're trying to do this in a game it won't allow you to put in your own dialogue you have to it has to present you dialogue options so let's say um, generate dialogue options for the user um, okay so dialogue options one perfect okay that's plenty um, yep so what you can do is instead of instead of you know asking the player to put in you know whatever um, they want you can also just have it, you know, generate some options for the user to pick from. What's the second quest? I'll go to the ravine. How will I know the Blackthorn Ravine? An eye for an eye. I like it. Um, you said there was a second quest. So this is great. Um, yeah, I think that this is probably good. I'll just break this down a little bit. So this top part is what I call either the framing or the persona. Um, so you just give it a situation, you tell it what's going on, and usually it can go from there. Um, another thing to, that I want to point out is um, Da Vinci 02 is the most quote-unquote aligned, but it also means it's the most, uh, or the least creative. Um, Instruct Beta is a little bit more creative, but it does still have some random behavior. And then plain vanilla Da Vinci, once you get good with it, um, you can get this to do pretty much anything. Um, but it does require a lot more structure because, well, here, let me just show you. Um, if you remove everything and you go back to plain Da Vinci, this is what might happen. Hi, Sheriff. <laughs> um, let's see. If we remove all this, player, Sheriff. Yeah, so you see how it's just like kind of just running off with it? Here, actually, let me remove the stop so you can see, see just how random this is. Player, horse. <laughs> yep. So this is what I mean by, like, Da Vinci can completely go off the rails if you don't provide it enough structure. It's just taking this and running with it. But, you know, if you go back a, a, few, a little ways in the video and you see where I had given it some dialogue already, Da Vinci understood, oh, we're writing dialogue now. Okay, I think that's good. Um, yeah, just some tips and tricks about using GPT-3 to generate fiction. Thanks for watching.